Yeah, hi there, here's one I've been sent. Let's have a look at it. So um, what we got is a sort of five minute ring with a sulfur and very strange ellipsoids. And otherwise it looks like, you know, there will be a structure. Let's just figure out what's going on here. So first of all, let's refine it and see where we get to. And I'm going to choose Shell XL to refine, refine this. And what we see is a whole lot of MPD, non-positive definite atoms, and also a lot of missing um, peaks. So this is clearly an interesting case where you know, only half the structure is actually present here. So these ones look very much like DMF, so we just select them and make them into nitrogen. And these ones are then carbon, 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 make them carbons. And that is a carboxylate, so that's a carbon as well. And we've got another DMF bound here to the metal, which is uh, supposed to be magnesium. There we go. Okay, carbons, and we refine this and we see what we get. So, refine it. The yeah, effect is 40%, so that's very, very high. Something isn't is, is, isn't right at all here. It's it's oh that 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 atom here. So you can clearly see the five-membered ring here, and that is not a magnesium. So this is another one of those sulfur things. So we select this magnesium here and make it a sulfur, and then select all the other ones in that ring as a carbon, and refine this. So hopefully this this was the main problem we've had here. And it'll it'll tidy up nicely. Yes, 22%. So it came down quite a lot, and that's that's how we like it. So let's try this button that puts everything together. So there's nothing more to put together. Another oxygen bound here. So let's make this oxygen, and this one here is another carbon, probably. And let's refine it again. Right. So what we're seeing here is probably some disorder on this ring. Um, we need to make this anisotropic in order to observe what really is going on. 15% is fairly decent here though. So we make everything um, anisotropic, clicking on this button. This is ticked, so therefore everything will just refine straight off. The R factor is now 13%. It's not great, but we are hopefully getting there. So we've got the connectivity here and control Q to um, hide this. So there's something missing in here that I've, I've sort of missed. So there's a carbon missing. There we go. And refine this again. So hopefully this drops a little bit, 8.44%. So this tells us we're really on a winning, um, winning line now. So that looks fairly good. So I suspect what we need to do is activate the waiting scheme that's activated automatically. That's great. So hit refine again. And now we are starting to see some hydrogens. So why not we just add the hydrogens geometrically and see where that gets us to. Yeah, so we've got some uh, DMFs. They, they wobble about a bit. That's fine. And there's maybe some disorder here. But I think in this particular context, I, I, I'm not going to go down the disorder route. Um, and now what else can we observe here? So this one obviously must go to something else. So this probably goes to another ring. So we can start moving the asymmetric unit about by clicking on mode grow and move. So this triflet here, where does it come? Come on, click. So that moved it from over there. That's not really helpful. So we might as well leave that ligand intact. Okay, so in, in principle, uh, this is sort of a settled structure. We've got magnesiums. Let's just check whether they really are magnesiums by clicking on the toolbox work and the electron density map. And it looks fine. So there's nothing going on here that's, that's highly suspicious. So I mentioned this is probably disordered over two positions, but we ignore this at the moment. Okay, so next thing we need to decide is on Z prime. So at the moment we are seeing a magnesium-magnesium interaction here, and there's a magnesium that's in a different environment. So this is a six-coordinated magnesium, whereas this is a magnesium which has got one, two, three, four, five oxygens, and then this sort of magnesium-magnesium 
a distance of uh, what have we got 3.573 so I suspect the formula unit with mg3 is sensible so z prime is 1 that's correct obviously the formula right now is not what's on the screen so we're clicking on this and this adjusts the formula to what's on the screen and um, let's see where these ones go to because I'm still not entirely sure that this is the best asymmetric unit we can get so let's make this uh, move thing on again and let's see where this comes from this comes from over there so that's probably not a bad move so we can generate those oxygens here as well so at this time we've got a whole ligand and we have the same game that we can play on this side so we generate those oxygens at this point. So this all symmetry equivalent, so the structure is exactly, come on, the structure is exactly the same, nothing's really changed, but what we've got is we've got a full ligand, we've got another full ligand, and we've got a third full ligand, so this is very clear, we've got a DMF, DMF, DMF. So it's quite a nice structure, we've got three magnesiums, we've got three ligands, and three DMFs. Um, we haven't got everything anisotropic, so some of those atoms for some reason we're still isotropic so let's click this again the R factor should drop down somewhat more it has we've got a shift so the ADP of the sulfur hasn't settled yet so we refine this again until the shift becomes uh, zero um, which it should hopefully do and it doesn't settle let's see what happens here refine control R and um, despite the number of cycles it's just not settling now it's settling so it was just this one that didn't settle okay so it looks pretty good um, everything's green there's no more shift it's a high resolution data set goodness of it looks fine we could have a quick look at the um, at the statistics we've got here we click on info and reflection statistics the thing always to check is the fops f calc plot and see whether there's anything really bad here and that looks pretty good we might want to exclude these um, minus one one zero zero and minus one zero two so these were probably under the beam stop or not measured for some reason but they should also appear here and they do so we can omit these reflections because they're, they're strong and really uh, do not fit at all so we omitted them and we're going back to work and refine again and this should probably make a fair difference here because these these strong reflections are quite um, quite important. Um, reflection statistics. The other thing to check is possibly the normal probability plot, and that looks very good. So your data sets it's it's it's, it's okay. So this is a, a nice structure. It hasn't settled now again because we remote, omitted the reflections. So Control R will deal with that, and um, hopefully this is settled now. Okay, I hope this was helpful and here's quite a nice little structure. Thank you for listening and thank you for using Olix too.